this video is about the affine cipher. The key for an affine cipher is going to be written as alpha comma beta, where both alpha and beta are numbers. Um, and there are three requirements for alpha and beta. One, the GCD, the greatest common divisor, of alpha and 26 must be one. Um, now the reason it's between alpha and 26 is because I'm using the English alphabet, which has 26 letters. Therefore, uh, I picked 26. If we were using an alphabet that had 30 letters or 30 characters, um, it would be the GCD of alpha and 30. So however many symbols or characters you're using, that's the number you want the GCD of alpha and the characters to be one. If you don't know how to um, figure out whether the GCD is one or not, there's a different video for that. Please see that link in um, link below. Um, second requirement. Alpha must be in between 1 and 25. 1 is okay, 25 is okay, anything in between, um, real whole numbers, no fractions or anything like that. And so you can't have like 26 or something like that. 3. Beta must be in between 0 and 25. Um, same requirements for that. No fractions or anything like that. So, how to encrypt using the affine cipher. We use this function here, this blue thing. f of x equals alpha times x plus beta. Where x right here, in here, is the plain text letter. So it's the letter that has not been encrypted yet. We call that plain text. Um, or the original letter, which we write as a lowercase letter. Um, just standard to clarify that that is our plain text um, for our own clarification as we're working these problems. Now this whole thing right here, the alpha times x plus beta is the ciphertext or the, the new letter. So we write that as an uppercase for standard for our own clarification that this was a cipher letter or ciphertext. Um, now, next I'm going to give an example of how you actually do this. I wrote here encrypt G, so notice I put it in lowercase, that's my plain text. Um, and here's our key, seven and two, where this, seven comma two, this is alpha, this is beta, so, so you can see it there, two. All right, so we have our letter, we have our key. First thing we need to do is figure out, we're trying to encrypt G. What number is G? So you can see down here at the bottom, I have a list of letters. I wrote A through Z out, and then under them, I just numbered them, starting at zero. Normally you start at zero, not one. Um, so A is zero, B is one, C is two, etc. And then I can find G here is six. So I'm going to write that here. G is six. So I'm going to use my function f of six equals alpha seven times x six plus beta, which is two. And that equals 44. Now, normally what we would do is we would take this 44 and we would find the number right here and then see what letter does it go with. However, as you may notice, 44 is not an option. It only goes up to 25 here. Um, so what we have to do is we have to subtract, we have to use modulus, um, and we're, mod we're using modulus of 26. Now, 26 again because English alphabet, um, however many characters you have, how many symbols you have, that's the number you're going to use for this step. So what I'm doing is I'm going to subtract 26. So 44 minus 26 is 18. Now, does 18 have a letter that correlates with it? Well, if I go look, yes, it does. Right here. 18 is S. So we say that G, when it gets encrypted, goes to S, lowercase, uppercase. And we have then encrypted the letter G using this key. Um, just as a general note for this step right here, if we had gotten something like uh, 
say we got 59. Say it equaled 59. All right, and we're using the English alphabet, so I go ahead and subtract 26. And that equals 33. You're like, okay, I did it, I subtracted my 26, and it's still not a small enough number. Um, all you have to do, subtract 26 again. Um, 33 minus 26 is seven. So we get down to a number seven, and then we go, does that have a num, or excuse me, a letter that goes with it? We look, yes, H right there goes with seven. So if we ended up with 59, that would be an H. So you just keep subtracting the modulus or the number of characters you have or you're using until you get something that actually does correlate with a letter. And that is how you encrypt using the affine cipher. Now you know how the affine cipher works, what the requirements are, and how to encrypt using the affine cipher. To learn how to decrypt, click on the link on the screen.